Okay, so we've just covered a very practical, uh, basic uh, approach to the way I think of lighting and the way that lighting affects color with that sphere on that checkerboard of different colors. Now, I just want to take that to a practical level now. How do you take that thinking and bring it into a practical painting? And I want to show you several different uh, uh, examples of the same drawing, the same painting, but lit in different ways using the thinking that I just showed you with the checkerboard and all the different variations that you can come up with, okay? So let's jump over to my board. Now, I've done three different sketches. You know, you guys know that I love animals. I love drawing animals, and so I figured I would do a sketch, a very quick sketch of uh, one of the lions from the safari that I was on in October. And I just thought I would take this and add the light and shadow in three different ways and just show you that you know once you understand light and shadow and the way that it affects color you can create your own lighting in your own paintings in any way that you want meaning um you won't be a slave to the reference that you shoot for instance here i've shot reference for this image right here and here's here's the reference right there so there's that and I've already so I can see where the light and dark are but because I understand light and shadow and how it works I can light this any way that I want and that's what I want to show you okay so let's go ahead and do that the first one that I want to do is basically let's just do a basic um, version of the one that we've already got the, the my uh, my reference so what i've done is i've just gone ahead and created uh an, the drawing and the local color so once again local color is the color of an object when it's not lit and it's not in shadow it's just the color of an object now if you're going to be following along with me um uh traditionally you don't have to paint everything down you don't have to paint your local color I just want you to understand that there's a local color before there's an actual light and dark okay so if you want to follow along you can go through the processes of the thinking about the local color but then once I start painting in my light areas and my dark areas that's when you can follow along with your traditional uh, paints okay so in this case um, let's just go ahead and uh, imagine this guy he's sitting out in the open um, in this case the light is coming down pretty much from straight above and uh, he's being lit from the top and that's creating shadows along the body so whereas you know when we were talking about how the color was being affected in the checkerboard with that sphere those were all just flat colors this is going to be the same thing, except you can see that there's variations within that local color. So when you're creating your shadows and you're creating your light areas, you have to think about those variations as well within the shadow and within the light area. Okay, so let's just go ahead and block in. Uh, and this is how I do it with every painting that I do. I start broad, block in, and then I add my details. And so here I'm going to go ahead and grab my local color. And it's a pretty warm, kind of grayed out uh, orange color, ochre, okay? Now, I want there, I love to play compliments. So what I mean by that, if I've got something that's really warm, orange, yellow, that sort of thing, I like to go into the complementary colors for the shadow areas, like the blues and the violets, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump over and I'm going to jump up to kind of the blue uh, almost opposite color and I'm going to darken it and gray it and I'm just going to block that in okay so right here there it is I'm going to go right here there we go all right and I know that my shadow is going to come around right in here somewhere. And I'm just going to block this in knowing that, you know, we've got these wrinkles that come down. So I want to go even darker. Maybe not quite as dark. There we go. It's wrinkles that come down. Okay. 
And when I'm doing my, my large oil paintings, I kind of start in this way. I'll start with a, a basic color that kind of covers everything as far as the uh, what the shadow might be. And then I can go in and add my variations of color. And really what's happening is that because this is so cool, the reason it's so cool is that, you know, the the, in the practical sense of everything, it's kind of, uh, it's shining back the color of the sky, that blue of the sky. So there's that. Within here, I want to go not quite as opposite. Well, maybe, well, I'm, I'm just going to drop it down in here. I want to go a little bit darker in the uh, in his mane, like so. Keeping it cool. Now I'm going to come back in with warm, uh, warmer colors within these shadows. But I like to play the compliments first. If it's warm, I'm going to go cool really literal so you really get a good sense of light and shadow right in here it's again it's a little bit lighter on that face there we go just like that all of this goes in the shadow And you can see already, even with this kind of flat, weird color, that you get a sense of light and dark already because we're using complementary colors, warm and cool, and we're using uh, variations in value. I'm going to go a little darker down here. Now, remember what I was saying before, how about... about how the most important aspect of getting a sense of light and dark is value. Remember I said that. You want to get a nice sense of light and dark by making sure your values are right. I'm going to get some shadow up in here, up in the eye. Right there. See how that you get that, that color over the eye we blow that up a bit and you can see how right away you start to get a sense of you know real sense of light and dark right here of light on him have a little bit in here go a little brighter with that maybe a little warmer Now, this is going to be an area right in here that's going to have a lot of reflected light inside it. So it's going to go very warm. But right now I'm going to keep it. I want to keep it all nice and cool. Stick with your, you know, when you're thinking about shadows, stick with that idea of warm and cool. Now, are there times that you can have warm shadows? Yes. When you have refl warm reflected light coming in, are there times where you can have cool light? Yes. But in general, in general lighting situations like we're talking about right here, it's going to be warm and cool. Warm light, cool shadows. So you can see it's an interesting effect because you, you can see that this isn't exactly how something is lit. But it doesn't look bad it doesn't look wrong you know we're, we're really just going okay there's a warm there's that warm body and here's the cool shadows and we created the shadow patterns coming in, I'm gonna go a little darker because we're coming in here and I'm just gonna create these some of these shadow patterns right here in the hair
just like that okay now look how cool that is when you play these blues against the vi or the, the oranges blue and orange opposite colors the complements so you can see how well they work off each other now within the shadows we're going to have warmth and we're going to have cool we're going to have value changes and that's what i want to work towards next okay so within this in this shadow pattern i'm going to show you um we're going to well actually let's go to the lights right now so in here, I'm going to grab that and I want to go a little warmer and some and brighter. And you can see it's going to, it's moving towards almost white. And I'm going to have some light. This is really direct. The way this plane is working against uh, the light, where the light's coming from. This part of the leg, this thigh, is really catching a lot of light. And then down here... It's a lot of light right right along the feet right in here lots of light right along there just like that and then up up here it's not as much it's catching some light but the 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 uh the plane the, is curving away from the direct light, so it doesn't catch as much. Until we get down into here, and then it catches quite a bit of light. Plus, the local color is white fur. Same with the feet right here. Okay. Now, the tops of it, every one of these wrinkles, I'm going to grab that color, that local color, go a little hotter with it. And each one of these wrinkles... It's going to be a little hotter on top. Catching light like that. This fur up here is going to be a little hotter. Quite a bit brighter. So we painted it in right over that local color. All of this is going to be quite a bit hotter. There's going to be some variations within the main where it's catching light more directly around the ears. Actually, I didn't I didn't paint the ears in. I want to go back to the shadow layer on that. There we go. So you can see as we as we color in as we paint in these light areas. We start getting a sense of light and dark as they as they get balanced out with these um, with the the blue shadows that we've just put in. Now we've got a nice bright area right here that's catching a lot of light. right over those cheekbones right under this eye and now there's an area here that the local color is white so now I want to go super bright with that just like that and then I can come down just a little darker and get some bright areas in here I'm thinking about what the local color is and going according to that there so now all of a sudden he feels like he's really in the light. I'm going to put a layer on top of the, my drawing layer. There we go. See that? Now let's go back into our, our shadow area. And we can go, okay, I'm going to grab that color. But now I want to come down because I'm in the gray. I'm going to go back to my warm air, my warm colors and see how it, I'm still in the gray, but I can come in now and I might go a little bit. Let me do this again. I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to go to my warm, but I want to go a little darker in some of these areas and maybe a little warmer. So now I can get into the main here. 
here. Let me grab it here. There we go. Right there and go a little darker with it. There. I just want to get rid of that just a touch. There we go. So now I can I'm thinking I'm right around the same value, just a little bit darker, but now I can play some variations of warmth. There's variations in that local color, right? So now I'm staying within my value range in the shadow area, but now I can play with warmer and cooler and brighter areas. Like here, I can go a little brighter in value because some of this fur is lighter within the shadow. But then up here, I'm gonna jump up to really bright in the light area. So you can see how we get a sense of light happening just by thinking about what? Value, right? And temperature. Value and temperature. And you're going to get a variation of value and temperature in both shadow and local color. So we get into here, I want to go even lighter and a little warmer on the chin because that fur on the chin is white. And it's going to be kick picking up some of the warmth around it. And a little bit off of the off the front of the face as well. Now we're going to have a little bit of lighter fur under here. So I'm going to play up that value change. But then it goes into warm and darker local color. So it's going to be warmer and darker in the shadows as well. Just like that. And so you see, as you build up your shadow layers against your light layers and you're playing your warm and cool, all of a sudden it starts to get a really great sense of light. And it's really that basic. Here, I want it like the teeth. I want the teeth to be kind of this warm. And they, they tend to be a little yellowish. But you can see how even out of the most basic sense, we get a nice sense of light and dark here. And then you can play with, as you get closer to the edges of your shadows, one of the things I like to do is play with making them get warmer. As they get closer to the light, maybe they get a little warmer. So here you can see I'm just playing with temperature and slight value vari value variations. Areas that are more white are going to be cooler. And then there's areas that have natural, you know, like this, the fur itself has a warmth to it. There. So you can see, by keeping those cool colors in there, it really does work well for those shadows. And we'll get a nice dark, deep shadow back here. Some of these areas, won't, don't be afraid to kind of dig in and get dark. So look at that in just a just a few minutes really we've been able to kind of establish a shadow pattern and and then play up some variations in in uh, value and temperature and the key really is to experiment with this you know mess around with it see see uh, how it works it's taken me a long time of trial and error of uh, figuring this out. But once you do, 
you're, it really starts to sing. So notice how within these shadow areas, I, I do have these big jumps from really cool over here to really warm because of the local color change underneath. But um, the overall value is all staying within the same range. There is variations in there, but compared to our light areas, there it's all in the same value range. Okay, you see that? So you get a really nice sense of light back here. Now, I want to make it feel like he's maybe casting some shadow. I'm going to go into the background and maybe go a little brighter or a little warmer, I should say, and brighter. And we can add some really nice kind of warm light back here. See there? I'm treating this, even though I'm working digitally, I'm trying to treat this as if I'm working uh, traditionally. So you can follow along traditionally as well. So I went really warm and brighter and you get this really nice sense of light with the grasses in the background. Okay, we can do the same thing here in the foreground. So this is this is basically how he's lit um, in the actual reference. This young male. I we'll add a few grasses here. But now you can see how I'm thinking, you know, using temperature, changing our temperature. We went cool and darker. Okay, so there's here's where we started. Here's where we started. Look at this guy down here. Here's where we started, this guy down on the bottom. Here's where we ended up with just adding a few um, touches of shadow patterns. First of all, thinking about the form, thinking about the value, making sure that the shadow is dark enough past uh, where the bright areas are, and then thinking about temperature. That's the third part, okay? So it really works well when you get all those working together I'm going to add a couple little details in here. There. So there's that one. Now what if, now like I was saying, we can change it around and say, okay, I want to, I want to make it more dramatic. I want to change, let's say I want to make his silhouette a bit more dramatic. Well, or I want to draw more attention to the head area. Well, what if we took all of that and um, we said, okay, let's do this. I'm going to take, I'm going to take everything and transfer it down. All right. So now let's go into the second one. What I've done is I've, I've uh, copied over uh, the same shadow and light pattern onto the second guy. But what if we want to create something that's a little bit more dramatic? What if there is a shadow Let's say he's he's uh, under a tree and uh, the front part of him is in light because I want all your attention to go to where all this contrast is. There's light and dark and, you know, that's it's going to draw, you know, a, a lot of attention right here because of the detail. So but there's equal amounts of attention over here because of the brightness and everything else. So I want to kind of push that back. Well, we can do that because I'm going to go right here and I'm going to grab that shadow color that we had before. And I'm just going to go right in on here and I'm going to erase away all these light areas that we put in. That's the first thing I want to do. Just going to get rid of those. Well, actually, I don't have to because I can just draw right over them. But I'm going to do it anyway. We're just going to get rid of those. And now I'm going to say, okay, I want this shadow pattern. There's a tree that he's sitting under. And we're going to 
maybe make give it a little bit of dappled light but all of this we might erase a little bit back for the dappled light because he's under a tree I'll make it a little bluer there we go Look at this. We're just going to cover it all right up. All of this is going to get changed. Look at that. Now to get this to work right, we might find that we're going to have to change up. We've got to get some shadow in the grass as well, right? But look at this. So we're doing something completely different here. Coming in here and just adding this giant shadow over everything. Now we know that there's, just like we did up in the top, I want to have some variations. I want to get some warmth in there. So maybe I can come in just like we have over here. There's a little bit of warmth. But even within a shadow area, remember, even within a shadow area, there's going to be areas that are lighter, catching reflected light from off, you know, somewhere. There's going to be areas that are darker, that aren't catching as much reflected light. Okay? So, with that in mind, I want to catch some shadow up here. So with that in mind, maybe we've got a little brighter area up here. Just catching a little bit more light. Right along like that. And then in the bright areas, let's give them some really nice bright areas to uh, where that dappled light might come through make it really warm so we're getting real you know some strong variations first uh, uh, in not just uh, value but also complementary colors I'm, see how I'm going really warm and kind of orange in this dappled light There. See how that works? Look at that. That's got a really nice feel to it. And then we can go really kind of bright with it in some of these other areas. Some of these areas that might be getting a little bit more light through. So now we've got this sense of dappled light coming through. And now we can come in here and we can go kind of darker and warmer in some of these deep dark shadows. Just get right in there. And get dark. So now we've got a lot of the attention being focused up here. And the other thing too, is we can, let's try something different. Right now we've got this dark area, I mean this light area back here behind our, our lion. What if we went dark with it? Just as an experiment. Once again, to get more contrast, I want to create more contrast. This is where I'm always thinking about not just uh, how to light the subject in a convincing manner, but how am I going to light the subject that's best for the image, that's going to create the most drama, that's going to guide the eye where I want the eye to go. So if I put everything back here kind of in dark, closer to the value of the, the uh, his shadow area back here, 
where his body's in shadow. If we do that, then what we're going to do is we're going to create more contrast up front. Oh, I gotta, let me just put a layer on top there. There we go. I'll just do it that way. So maybe there's something back here that's all in shadow. He's up against some bushes. But the front part of him is catching light. See, so what's going to happen? Well, let's just get this drawn in really quick and I'll show you. We're all of a sudden going to get this head is going to have a lot of contrast and it's going to pop right off the page. Just like this. This is what we look for. There we go. There, see now we've got some nice contrast happening where the where the light is, where the light's hitting. Now all the attention is going right there when you look at this image. You go right to where I want you to look, which is right at the head. There. And then we'll get some darkness in here as well. Maybe a little darkness there. But we'll get some dappled light. Get the, the bright green coming up in here. Maybe a little bit of dappled light here. You get that kind of thing happening. Look how loose we can be and still keep our sense of light. That's important. I want you to see that. Maybe we get a little bit back here. And then we can go kind of really bright with it. There we go. Now back here, uh, behind behind him, you can uh, play with variations in the value as well. We can go even darker in some of these areas, but strategically place it to where I'm getting the most contrast, like around the face. So I'm, we're looking at some little negative spaces and maybe some of the dark <clears throat> and the foliage that's behind him in the shadow areas. Let's play it a little bit like that. So now what's happening is my attention is going right to his head. That's where our area of, of uh, greatest contrast is. Now I want to come back into here in some of these light areas and brighten them up even more. Like so. There. So now we've got something that's a completely different feel than what we have up on top. You know, he's, he's sitting in the shade. He's cooling off. He's got some dark shadows behind him. Um, all by going off of what we know about how light and shadow works, which is going off of that, uh, the sense of value, value, and there we go, and uh, uh, temperature. Bingo, just like that. Something completely different. But at the same time, it feels pretty good. And then if we jump in here and go in and hit just little accents along. Unlock that. There we go. You can hit little accents where you might catch a little bit of extra 
little faded uh, texture in, in some of the muscle areas, the skin textures, or fur textures, I should say. Just little, little accents like that. So everything we've done here is exactly what I showed you with that sphere sitting on that checkerboard. It's just taking the local color of a lion's fur and applying it in the same way and thinking about the light in a completely different way. In this case, dappled light. Oh, there's a train. Just like that. Okay. Now we can do it again. We can do it completely different. What if we did it where his front end is in shadow and the back end goes into light? So let's do that. I want to jump down to uh, this guy. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to take this background layer. I just want to expand it. I'm going to make it pretty bright. Because ultimately, I'm going to have his head in silhouette. So that's the goal on this, is to say, okay, how clear would it be? What would it look like if he was in silhouette? So now, we've taken him. We've This is the more traditional. This is what he looked like sitting out in the field. Then we took him here and said, okay, what if we put him under a tree and that tree is casting a shadow on his body, but we decided to keep the front and we want to draw more attention to the front. So we darken that background. So he pops. Well, now I'm going to do the, I'm doing the opposite. I'm going to brighten that background like so. And then we're going to put him in shadow in the foreground. Okay. So now I'm going to go just like we did before. I'm going to grab that that blue gray because that's basically opposite of everything we've got here and I'm gonna go right under the drawing layer I'm just gonna start kind of putting him in shadow remember I know there's gonna be variations in here but I want to get that this blocked in first See, now you can see how clear the silhouette plays against that background. The silhouette of his profile against that background is pretty darn clear. And I'll be, I think I could probably go even darker with it if I wanted to. Now the question is, how far do I want to take this back? I'll probably come back. Let's come back to here. Let's do the same thing. We're going to give him some dappled light. So it's the leaves of the trees are all kind of in shadow on him. I'm basically going over all of that local color that I put down. I'm just going to remember what I put down. And we're going to put those variations back in, but we're going to do it within the same value range of the shadow that we're creating. So there we go. Now the, sh the tree shadows are going to come in here. Now we're getting into the parts where he's he's still in light. So I'm going to go back to the original shadow shapes on on the back end.
<clears throat> so he's got his butt. His butt is in the light. His back end. That's all in light. He's casting a shadow on the inside of his thighs here. There, like that. Already you can see we've got a sense of light. Even though we've kind of gotten rid of all the other color that we had laid down, you get a sense of light because, what I, remember what I said was the most important part? The value. Light and dark. If you get your light and dark right, in this case, here, then you're, you're going to get a sense of light. And then you go with temperature. And so here we're playing cool in the shadow, warm in the light, and that adds to the sense of light. I got some shadow coming up here. And then on top. Maybe a little bit of shadow this way. Like so. See how, you know, when you when you play with light against dark and dark against light and vice versa and you go back and forth, you can really create some really great patterns and designs. That's really all it comes down to for me is always thinking about what's how are we silhouetting one against the other, you know, light against dark, dark against light, whatever that might be. And then you create a really nice, interesting something to look at, see? So let's, uh, now that we've got our basic pattern laid in, now it's time to just basically um, fill it in, you know, getting our variations of warm and cool. So I'm coming back into the main now, and I want to add my warm areas within the, remember, like I said, within that value range. I'm going to stay within that value range. I'm not getting too much darker. But I can play with that warm. Play with all of this warm fur right here. And I want to make sure that I'm not getting too... Um, I want to make sure I'm not getting too pure in my color. I'm going to keep it in the gray realm. And I'm going to jump over to the white areas occasionally too. I want to jump back and forth so I can get a sense of my value range within the darks. Remember, you're going to have a value range within your shadow areas. Right now, that value range is fairly flat, what we just laid in. But what we're doing is we're creating a, a different range within that. Like so. There we go. So there's little bits of Changes in value in here. Changes in temperature within the shadows. Adding just little bits of temperature changes in here. But overall, keeping this all nice and cool against what we're going to be doing out here. There we go. That might be a little broad on the value range, but I'm going to just play with it, see what happens. There we go. 
go. Let's get nice and dark in here. There we go. So the idea is, you know, the color of the sky, you know, and, and especially in the shadow areas, the color of the sky really gets in there. That blue of the sky, that light that the blue creates really gets into the shadow areas and creates, that's where you get that coolness from. There we go. And then back here, I'm going to jump behind again. And we're going to go even hotter, almost, almost like super bright because our, basically our lens, our aperture is adjusted to the shadow area. So we're seeing value changes within the shadows. So that means you could get away with taking everything in the background and really kind of blasting it out. And what does that do? It creates, by adding some variation back here, and value especially going brighter we create that nice silhouette that I like so much that creates a clearer statement so look at all those different variations we did all with the same guy all using the same theory of light and dark and warm and cool but trying them in different ways there look at that nice and nice and bright let's jump into the light areas now on him Got really bright and uh, and warm. Yeah, we're going in. I'm going to go even brighter once we get this first initial layer laid down. Just trying to get that dappled light feel on him. go and as we get higher up more towards the the direct perpendicular plane off the light it's going to get brighter the light's coming straight down so as you get more per more perpendicular to that light, you're going to get brighter. These areas not so bright. But as you get up higher on the leg up here, it's more perpendicular to that light, then it gets a little brighter. Top of the tail, perpendicular. See that? I'm going to add some warmth. Just some nice bright warmth. Let's play against that blue. There we go. So played this a little simpler, but you can see that the sense of light still comes through very strong. And it's going to go through and add a little bit of color to the skin in here. Right there. So this is, you know, if you're, if you're painting in, uh, in gouache or acrylic or oil, this is a great method because you can go back in and go over and over and over again and build up your color in this way that I'm working now. Watercolor takes a bit more planning. It's a bit more difficult, but you can build up in this way and, and really create some really great uh, patterns. So 
So I'm just going to go a little bit darker now on some of these grass blades. There. And then within that, I can go a little bit brighter, maybe a little greener. Some of them that are ca catching a little bit more light. Reflected light coming in. Like so. So you see how this really builds an entirely different mood. So notice how the brightest grass blade in here is about the same value as our local color out in the light. So that when I go out into the light, I'm really going to go bright. So you can really see that transition between the light areas and the shadow areas. And this is kind of a basic uh, uh, introduction to my approach to you know that practical use of the way you think of color when it's lit or in shadow you know thinking about that sphere and those and that checkerboard of colors you know if you just think about everything in that basic way how is that color changing when it's not in light how is it changing when it is in light you know and then you also think about the form in this case you know we he's got a mane and the body shape and all that so that's going to dictate your shadow shapes on the on the character as well as shadows from off screen like we did with the tree and dappled light and then uh and then you just start applying it to um whatever the composition is that you want to create so here you go here's three different approaches to the same subject but lift different lighting situations thinking about value thinking about temperature putting those together and applying them to the image that you want to create it's virtually end endless the, the the number of variations that you can come up with is is virtually endless so um let's take this thinking and let's move on to the next illustration mm -hmm.